Well, today we're talking about your strategic brand narrative. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're talking about how you can tell your compelling story and just attract huge amounts of traffic and guests because they love your story. This is the Vacation Rental Success Podcast, keeping you up to date with news, views, information and resources on this rapidly changing short-term rental business. I'm your host, Heather Bayer, and with 25 years of experience in this industry, I'm making sure you know what's hot, what's not, what's new and what will help make your business a success. Well, hello and welcome to another episode of the Vacation Rental Success Podcast. I'm super happy to be with you. I'm still down here enjoying Texas and doing no shoveling. I think I mentioned before that I do have the Nest app on my iPad and every so often I can just go and take a look and see what it looks like at home. And it really lo- it does look pretty. It looks really nice and white and pretty. But I'm very happy to be down here amongst the green. And I actually saw some leaves coming out on little buds coming out on the trees the other day. So spring comes earlier in Texas than it does in Ontario. In fact, I won't get back to Ontario until the middle of April. And we won't be seeing buds on the trees until May. So I sort of get two springs. It's just exciting. It really is exciting. I get uh, I get spring in Texas and the wildflowers, which if you've never seen the wildflowers in Texas, it is just beyond spectacular. And then we'll go home for spring in Ontario, which will be lovely too. Hey, I lead such a good life. I love it. So part of the good life, I find when I'm away like this, I get much more reading done than I do when I'm at home. That You know, there's always something going on at home more than there is here. And I don't know why, because I've simply just moved my life from my office from one location to another. But I do seem to be able to get more reading done when I'm off on my snowboarding jaunts. And currently, my little obsession is a book called Primal Branding by Patrick Hanlon. And if you're a member of my Facebook group, the new Facebook group, which is the business of short term rentals and property management, I did post a video of a TED talk with Patrick Hanlon, which actually gives a summary of the book. And I'm really enjoying this. It's about how you brand your business in such a way that people just really respond to the messages you give. And just briefly, Hanlon talks about seven unique points of differentiation, which is what he calls it, how you differentiate yourself from other companies. And you know that we have to do this now. We have to be different. We have to differentiate ourselves from our competition because there is so much competition out there. So these seven unique points of differentiation are, number one is the story. And he says that your brand needs to have a story or a background where your brand originated from because it gives viewers and the people who come to your site or see you out on social media, it gives them something to connect with, something they can believe and trust in. And we all know that with uh, with other brands. And we're going to come to that. We're going to come and come back and talk to some other brands that have really great creation stories because that is the topic of this podcast. But I wanted to put it in context with the rest of Hanlon's points. So the second one he calls Creed. This tells what you believe in and how you might be different or similar to other belief systems out there. So it really talks to the values you have in and around your business. That is your unique point of differentiation. Thirdly, it's icons, the quick associations or flashes of meaning that are associated with your brand. One of the reasons that I wanted you to go and have a look at this YouTube video, and I will put a link to that uh, that TED Talk on the show notes, because there's an image in that video, a couple of images, and it shows a black dot, a black square, and a black triangle. It said, you know, these are quick images. And then the next image is the image of Apple, and then the image of Nike, which are just black and white. And this is the differentiation. You know, you associate, every time you see the Apple image, you associate it 
It doesn't have to say Apple. You just know it's Apple. And we know that with visual icons, but also, you know, it can be smells or sounds or something that you touch as well. So if you have an icon that is linked to your company, then you're uniquely differentiating yourself. The fourth one is rituals. And these are a repeated experience associated with the brand. So it's the kind of engagements your viewers or consumers can have with you. So it's the kind of engagements your potential guests can have with you that build up a certain expectation about your brand and the future experiences that they can expect to have. And I think I will probably do maybe another short episode about rituals because the rituals that are perhaps associated with with some different property management websites that clearly stand them out from the rest. So I think I'm going to explore a few of those and come back to you on that one. So the fifth one is language. And this is about the words and the language that we use as, as a part of our brand. Now, it could simply be something like short-term rental or vacation rental. Often when I'm talking, when I'm talking to you, I use words like OTA, online travel agency. That is, you know, it's a part of my brand of vacation rental formula that we talk all the time about OTAs. So within our tourism travel industry, we will maybe have different language that we use. And if we can get this across to our potential guests, that this is very much a part of our brand, then that can attract them to us. Number six was an interesting one. It's anti-believers. So for every belief system that we have, there's a group of anti-believers. I mean, I'm, I'm a Mac user. The anti-believers are the PC owners. Then, of course, there's the Republicans and Democrats, and we're not going there. But it, the anti-believers sort of identifies who and what the brand is or is not. For us, it is direct booking versus booking online. So you have an anti-believer as a part of your brand. It gives a good idea of the direction you want to take that brand in. So if you're thinking about doing more direct booking, then you're going to spend more time talking about direct booking versus booking online. And finally, number seven, there needs to be a leader. This is the person in your company that's setting out against all odds to do something that's really, really special. And this actually comes all the way back to what we're going to talk about today, which is the number one of these differentiators, which is telling your compelling story. So if you've listened to this podcast for any length of time, you have probably heard my story. And if you have, you're just about to hear it again, because there may be some new listeners who have never heard my story, but it's part of my vacation rental formula brand. Now, a compelling story is basically your creation story. It's how you became a part of this industry. What got you into it? If you've listened to any number of the interviews that I have done with industry experts, one of the very first questions I ask them is, how did you get into this business? Because I want to hear the story. We had Brooke Fouts on the podcast a couple of weeks ago talking about owner acquisition. And Brooke's story is great. He was brought into a small property management company and built it up from naught to 500 properties in a very short space of time. When I've talked to Steve Milo of VR Trips, he has such a compelling story that he started with a couple of his own properties. He couldn't find a property manager to look out for them. So he started his own company and he had 125 properties before he took on his first paid employee, his first in-house employee. More recently, I've spoken to V. Lee, who is a property investor from Houston. You really need to go and listen to that interview with V because her story is just amazing. And her story is on her real estate website. And it's about 
her history as an immigrant. I mean, this is from her Reballers website, and it says, V has accomplished this with great challenges that most of us never experience or have to overcome. When a young girl comes to America at the age of 15 from Vietnam, there can be some extreme challenges. These include English not being her native language and having to overcome many daily cultural issues that most of us take for granted. These challenges haven't limited her success, but rather these challenges have given her focus, strength, determination and resilience. That is a compelling story. She then goes on in her story to talk about having flipped 150 properties since getting involved in the real estate business in 2014. V is now investing in short-term rental properties. And it's it, to me, that that is a compelling story. So my story, and I told this on numerous occasions at presentations, is I was living in England managing a training company, management training, in fact, and I was invited along with my family to my brother's wedding in Ontario. And we'd been to Ontario once or twice before. But this time we were coming as a, as a en masse with, with 12 of us, I think. All the families coming out from England to come to my brother's wedding. And then a week later, we all went en masse into Michigan to my niece's wedding. So it was this great clan of Brits and Scots all coming together. And my brother, bless him, he's not the world's greatest giver, but he excelled himself at this time. And he found us a cottage on a lake that we didn't have to pay for. He'd organised it all. It It accommodated all 12 of us, so he said. And it was going to be fantastic. And we couldn't wait to experience this place. What he neglected to tell us, I mean, we all have brothers like this. I think many of us have brothers like this. They are sweet and charming and completely unreliable. So I guess it came as no surprise when we arrived, not at the driveway of this property, but at a dock with a rickety old boat to take us to this property, which was only accessible by water. So there we are, 12 of us with all our baggage on this dock going over in groups of three or four to this cottage which was idyllic you know it sat perched on the top of a cliff the waterfront was amazing but it clearly hadn't been occupied for a number of months if years because there were more mice in there than there were people who were about to occupy it let's say so we spent cutting a long story short and those of you who've seen it in my presentations know it's a bit of a longer story But we did our best. We cleaned the place from top to bottom. We tried to get rid of the mice. We accepted the fact that the holding tank was full and there was one outhouse that we would share between the 12 of us until the holding tank was able to be emptied. But, you know, we had a fantastic time and we swam in the lake at dawn when the mist was rising off it and we sat around campfires and we shared stories and sang songs and played games long into the evening. I mean, this was this was 1998. We didn't have Wi-Fi at this place and we didn't have any TV. So we did all the traditional stuff and we reconnected as a family. It was amazing. But on the last night, my sister and I sat out on a rock and we're overlooking the sunset, gin and tonic in hand, as you do. And I look back at this little cottage perched up on this rock behind us. And I said, you know, we could do this. We could do this because this is a business that we need to get into and we could do it a darn sight better. And that was a start. That was a start. That was 1998. Here we are in 2020. So you do the math. And since then, I bought seven properties in Ontario, built a property management company from nothing. Um, Now we have 170 properties. I've written a book about it. At that point... I had no inkling that I would ever be in this business and I had no inkling that I would be moving to Canada because three years after we had that experience, we moved full time. We emigrated to Canada and left England behind. So that's my story. And I tell it because, you know, you may or may not find it compelling, but it it's a story of many of us. It's a story of doing something that we never thought we would ever do and making, you know, it's a success story too. 
So I read this online the other day and I, I copied and pasted it, but I unfortunately, I don't know where the source is, but I quite like it. It says the human brain is wired to respond to well-crafted narrative. Neuroscience proves that storytelling is the best way to capture people's attention, to bake information into their memories and forge close personal bonds. Your audience is programmed to crave and seek out great stories. And that will never change. And not to forget, further on in this article, which I don't have the source to, says people don't relate to perfection as well. They relate to the emotional journey of experiencing adversity, struggling through it and ultimately overcoming it. Because in a nutshell, that's a story of life. Going back to V's story, you know, her struggle to arriving from Vietnam with having no English. My story, which is not as vast as V's, but about arriving with 12 people with up to a mouse-filled cottage and, and a, a full holding tank. So think about it, and we're going to talk about you writing your stories in a minute, but think about adding in a little bit of adversity. People like to hear that there's some negatives you've overcome. I just want to segue a little talking about stories into some of our major brands in this industry. We all know the Airbnb story, don't we? We all know how Brian Chesky and Joe Gabir got started. You know, they were both 27. They'd met at the Rhode Island School of Design. They were struggling to pay their rent. They were trying to figure out how to make some money to pay the rent. And there was a, a conference going on and they thought, hmm, let's rent out an airbed in our space. And couch surfing was already going on at the time. But they had this idea of creating a website based on renting something that was already in existence. And it was a perfect plan. There's a lot more to that story. And a lot of us will know the continuing story or the difficulty of getting this message out. And they talk about their failures. You know, we go back to J.K. Rowling and her story. We know that J.K. Rowling was writing the Harry Potter books, sat in a cafe somewhere in Scotland, and she was out of money and she was just trying to make ends meet. And she was turned down by publisher after publisher after publisher. People love these stories. So just carrying on on this OTA theme, do you know the backstory of HomeAway or VRBO? Well, maybe. I looked it up. What I found was VRBO. The original website was created by David Klaus in Aurora, Colorado, in order to rent his Breckenridge ski resort condo. I don't know anything more than that. I don't know any other. I couldn't find any compelling story. And then I know about Home Away, that it was founded by Brian Sharples and Carl Shepard. I couldn't find a compelling story. Do you think that part of the fact that we have gone full on into accepting Airbnb as as part of our culture and part of our consumer culture because of that story that they told. Think about other stories. You know, think about Apple, how Apple was founded. You don't have to pick up Steve Jobs' biography to know what his story was. You don't have to pick up Richard Branson's autobiography to know what his story was. These stories have been around for a long time because they are the creation stories. They're the fabric of those brands. So you're saying, well, OK, that's fine. But how do we do this? These are mega brands. How do we create our own stories? So I want to give you a, a couple of examples, and it's a couple of people that I know, and you know, they have compelling stories on their websites, a little bit different from the, the major brands, but these are stories that are allowing their prospective guests, when they come to their site, to connect with them and to pull in that feeling of trust and confidence. And you know, you are trying, when you're doing, if you're doing a book direct campaign, you want people to have trust and confidence in your business. Otherwise, they're not going to book with you. They're going to have a look and they're just going to pop straight back over to Airbnb or Home Away and make their booking. But you want them to come with you. So I want to give you a couple of examples. And both of these people I've had on the podcast before. Um, one is Rick Oster from Oster Golf Houses. And once again, I, I'm going to read out 
their story from their website. So you get the gist and then you can go and have a look at the website and see how they've incorporated their About Us page or My Story page into their site. So Rick has built a number of houses on golf courses over the years. And in more recent years, it's been on the Robert Trent Jones golf courses in Alabama. And I will put a link to the podcast I most recently did with Rick about building those houses if if you want to uh, know a little bit more about creating a niche for your business. But anyway, in his story, Rick says, like most guys, I love golf trips with my good friends. I'm married and father of three three children, so I appreciate the time away to relax, share a few laughs and reconnect. As I get older, I cherish these trips even more. The reason I go on trips with friends is to be together. However, I became increasingly frustrated by the lodging choices at golf resorts. Staying in a hotel forced us to separate and provided no space to socialise in private. We could stay in a vacation rental house, but it's hard to find one that can comfortably accommodate a group of eight guys. After realising the type of experience I was searching for didn't exist, I was determined to create it myself. In 2005, I sat down with a blank sheet of paper and began writing ideas. I asked myself one question. If I were to design a home specifically for groups on a golf trip, what would I include in that home? This is what I wrote. And you can go to Oster Golf Houses and... Read what Rick wrote. It's a wonderfully compelling story. He has a photograph of him as a young man on a golf course. I mean, maybe it's as a young boy with his father, but that all adds to the story. You know, including photographs is great. So any golfing enthusiast going to Rick's website is going to read this story, see the photographs and immediately have a connection. They have a connection with Rick and his properties. So here's another one. Now, very recently, I interviewed Richard and Sophie Smith from Beside the Sea Holidays in Cambersands in the UK. And their story, in fact, because I love their story, is one reason I wanted to interview them for, for the show, because I was immediately drawn in to the fact that they loved what they do, because this comes out in their story. So on their site, it says, Beside the Sea Holidays is a family business, man, woman, boy and dog. And there is a picture of Richard and Sophie and their son and their dog. We're lucky to live every day beside the sea and we take pride in sharing what our beautiful coastline and countryside has to offer our guests. Our story. Beside the Sea was set up in 2009 by us, Richard and Sophie. Originally from Essex, we fell in love with Camber and the beautiful unspoilt sandy beach over 10 years ago and bought a holiday cottage. It didn't take us long to realise that we wanted to offer a much more personal service to holiday cottage owners and their guests than we had experienced from other agencies. And I love that bit because they're differentiating themselves. Within that paragraph, they are differentiating themselves from other agencies. We started small, but Beside the Sea soon grew from a part-time job into a proper family business. While Sophie looks after the account side of things and Richard handles the web techie stuff, we work together on all aspects of the business. This also includes Arthur, our four-year-old, and Dougal, our dog. As a family, we love meeting guests who come and stay from all over the world. Now, as a guest, if I'm reading that, I'm, again, immediate connection particularly if I'm, I mean, their target group are families with pets. So they're positioning themselves as their own persona, as their avatar. They are the the exact people, the exact target market that they are trying to attract. And in creating this story, this compelling story, they are building the relationship with the guests who come and look at that part of their website. So I know from a lot of searching on websites that many, many companies have an About Us page. And that is great. I know from my own personal experience that if I'm looking at products and services with a company I have no experience of, I want to know about them and I I will go to their About Us page to check them out. That's particularly true of suppliers. And you know, if you're a supplier 
and you are out there listening to this, I just want to give you a tip. On your About page, About Us page, I want to see you, a person, and I want to read your story about why you are doing what you are doing. You might be doing it to make a gazillion dollars because that's that's what seems to be the case from most of the About Us pages that suppliers put out. The ones that really resonate are the ones where there is a creation story. And I keep talking about this creation story because that's what I want you guys to put together. You know, generally the About Us page is completely devoid of any content that a potential guest can connect to emotionally. So I'd like to take you back to your own About Us page. Go and have a look. What does it say about you and why you started your company? What was it that wanted you to get into hospitality in the first place? And I don't really want to hear that, you know, I've I've had years and years of experience in the hotel industry and hospitality industry. Anybody can write that. It looks more like a LinkedIn profile. You know, definitely don't use your LinkedIn profile because you're not normally wanting to connect emotionally with other people on LinkedIn. You want to tell them about your experience in the industry. Absolutely. But it's not right for this audience. So just make sure that you know who your persona is and connect with them. I'll just give you an example, and, and I'm not sure if it's, um, if it's still out there. We at one time, well, we still do, we, we like to attract people who are active, kayakers, triathletes to, uh, to our properties up in Ontario. So in my profile, I wrote that, you know, I'm a wannabe triathlete. I have done triathlons in the past decade was quite a long time ago when I did the last one, but I am still really eager to get back into doing triathlons. And actually, actually, segueing out into that, when you get to a certain age and you start doing some of these events, doing a triathlon, you're almost guaranteed a medal because you're usually the only person in your age group if you choose a, uh, a small event. Just wanted to share that. I am uh, thinking once again, as I do every year, about doing a triathlon this upcoming summer. And I will choose one where I'm going to get a medal. Anyway, that, that's just, you know, it's part of my story. So if I'm trying to attract people who are training for triathlons, then I'm telling the story that I know what it takes to do a triathlon. I know that you need swimmable water and perhaps open water that is safe. I know that you need good roads to run on and great roads to cycle because I've already been there. I've done it. I know the territory. So your compelling story should share that you know the territory. So I'm calling it different things, your brand story, your creation story, whatever. You, it's all very much the same, but it has the same goal. It's telling the story of a company that started, that was started by you and usually with property management companies or your own property. It's, it's an entrepreneurial story, but you need to tell it in a way that is going to grab your site visitors' attention. So another way of telling the story or adding a little bit to a story is making your customers the star of it. So build a story about a family looking for a special place to celebrate something. You're going back to Richard and Sophie. They can very easily relate to that type of vacation goal. And the same with Rick Oster. He can definitely build a story about the golfing groups that are looking for the right place to go and have a vacation together. And uh, what Rick did, you, you can go look at his site. He, he created these wonderful golf houses, each of which has a number of queen suites because he didn't want his golfing groups turning up and having to decide somebody, a couple of guys to get in the bunk bedroom. No, he wanted all of his guests to have exactly the same experience. So each of his properties is uh, identical in the bed configuration with these these king king bedded suites, all with large TVs, 
and a games room and an outdoor space where all the guys can get together after a good game of golf and sit outside and perhaps look over the golf course and sit and enjoy their evening. And of course, a great big barbecue. But in his story, he includes all of this. So take some time to think about it. Think about how you can create your compelling story. What is your creation story? What were the adversities that you faced in growing your business? You know, don't be afraid to talk about the failures that you had. People will resonate with that because this is just life. And, you know, going back to somebody like Richard Branson, there were huge amounts of failures that he had on his way to success. The Airbnb founders with all their failures on their way to success. So people do accept and resonate with that. Even, and let's face it, everybody loves a good story. So that's it. If you have a great creation story, a compelling story already on your website, I want you to send me the link, please. I want to see your story. I want to hear your story. And I can then share it out with uh, with others. Um, I've mentioned recently about our new Facebook group. It's called the Business of Short-Term Rental and Property Management. It's a space for professional owners of multiple properties and small property managers and maybe large property managers to go to and share experiences, information. Within the first three days of opening up this Facebook group, I cannot believe the life that it took. It just took a life of its own. And people are sharing some amazing information. For example, I just put a question out there and said, you know, what's in your tech stack? What what's what are your tech essentials? And so many people contributed with the tech that they're using that other people have found interesting and have taken on board. And I and I love to see that. This is about networking and sharing and just being part of a really expert group. So love to have you over there. Uh, I'll put the link on the show notes. Go to the show notes at vacationrentalformula.com and you will see this podcast and the show notes on it. And you can scroll down and uh, and check out the Facebook group. Uh, you can always email me if you forgot what the Facebook group name was. Email me and I'll tell you. That's heather at vacationrentalformula.com. So I want to tell you about our property management professionals course or PM Pro for short, that's going to be launched in early March. It's part of my creation story, actually, because when I started, there was no help. There were no books. There were no videos. There were no courses. Well, actually, yeah, I think Christine Karpinski, those of you who've been around a while will remember Christine Karpinski had written a book on how to do this. And it was a bit like, you know, it it was the Bible at the time. But that was all there was, really. Now, there is so much out there. It's just difficult to sift through. It's a real challenge to find what's relevant, what's worthwhile, what's cost effective. You can dip in and out of Kindle books, of YouTube video channels and pick up bits and pieces here and there. But I wanted to build something that was different. I wanted to build something that would take my 25 years of being in this business as an owner and as a property manager, along with many years of owning my own management training company. So I've created a comprehensive course that covers all the aspects of a property management, of building a property management company and put it all in one place over a 12 week period. So what's going to happen is the course will run over 12 weeks and a new module will get released every week. And you get a combination of pre-recorded videos and workbooks together with Facebook Live presentations and Zoom meetings with myself and our training team, where you can ask questions and take a hot seat if you have specific issues you want addressed. And there's also a set of workshops, one on each topic, that will be held live with one of our training experts. So who are these experts? Well, I'm just going to give you three of them to start with, um, because I'm teasing now. 
So our training team includes some of the best names in the business. And we have Tammy Sims from Properly. And Tammy's going to come along in the housekeeping and maintenance module to uh, talk about standards and to talk about how changeovers can be made even better. And we have Kate Birch from Property Protect. Kate is an expert in insurance. And as, as some of you, many of you may know, um, our company, my company, was sued a couple of years ago uh, in a million-dollar lawsuit for a slip-and-fall accident. That is still ongoing. And if we didn't have good E and O insurance, we would have been in a very difficult position, and I think we would have lost our company. So if you're sitting there scratching your head and wondering what E and O insurance is, then Kate Birch is going to be telling you all about that. And it's it's a just such an important thing to know. We also have Vanessa D'Souza Large from Rentals United, who's going to come along and talk about channel management. We all need to know this. We need to know that, you know, how we how we go about not just having our properties on Airbnb, but having them on HomeAway and Verbo and other channels, maybe booking.com as well, and making sure that your calendars are synchronized. So Vanessa's going to be coming along to talk about that. On top of all that, you're going to be able to ask questions of me and of any of the training team in the private student group. So I'm going to be available for 12 weeks. You know, you get my most personal tuition. So that is, you know, that is a great benefit to be able to, you know, when you, that's going to be a great benefit when you suddenly have a question and you think, I need to have this one answered because that's going to enable me to move forward. Now, I'm not saying I'm going to be available at two o'clock in the morning, but during business hours, I will be around to answer your questions. And one of the reasons is, is that we're only accepting 40 students and I want to make sure it is right for you. So I'd love to hear from you if you have any specific questions. So head on over to the show notes, check out the course curriculum and let me know if you've got those questions. So when is it? The course is going to be released in early March. So if you want to secure a spot, get on the waiting list now. Costs you nothing, just get your name down and we will be in touch. So you're going to be hearing more about that. You'll hear more about it in in our newsletter if you get that. And I am doing a webinar, I believe it will be next week. Yep, I'll be doing a webinar next week where we're talking about emergency planning. This, uh, the coronavirus is, is, whether it's media pressure or not, things are happening, people are changing plans and we need to know or we need to be prepared to handle what may come in the next year or so because this is going to go this is not something that's going to go away overnight so we need to be prepared for that so watch out for information on my emergency planning webinar where i tell you how we do emergency planning and how we as a company my company is already completely prepared for anything that may happen during this coronavirus outbreak. So you'll be hearing some more about that as well. And just a reminder of the book I talked about at the very beginning of this episode. It's called Primal Branding by Patrick Hanlon. And we just talked today about the first differentiator, which was telling a compelling story. You really need to go look at that book and understand the other six differentiators creed icons rituals language anti-believers and leadership patrick says you don't have to have every single one of those you need to have two or three optimally three or four of those in place to create a good brand so once again there will be a link to that book on the show notes okay i've talked myself out now heading for a cup of coffee and get myself outside and feet up in the sunshine. So that's it for me for this week. It's been a pleasure as ever being with you. If there's anything you'd like to comment on, then join the conversation on the show notes for the episode at vacationrentalformula.com. We'd love to hear from you. And I look forward to being with you again next week.